Hey everybody, welcome back to the tutorial. In this uh, section, we're going to be performing a taxonomic annotation on our complete data set. Once this is done, we'll be able to view the organisms that are present and represented by the ASVs in our data set. To do this, we'll be using Classify SKLearn, which is a machine learning based tool that takes our data set and a pre trained classifier. In this case, we'll be providing a pre-trained classifier to you that has been trained on the Green Genes 13-8 database. For research in the future, you can find a, a variety of pre-trained classifiers on our website. You can also find information about training your own classifiers that may give you a better annotation based on the particular uh, your particular environment and samples. Also, if you want to maintain your own taxonomy resources for the production of uh, more specific classifiers, then there also is a plugin called Rescript, which allows you uh, to manage these reference resources. In this tutorial, though, we're going to be uploading our pre-trained classifier, performing the annotation, applying some additional filtering based on our taxonomic annotation, and then finally producing a bar plot which will allow us to visualize the organisms present in our data set. Let's go over to Galaxy and we'll get started. All right, before we begin, uh, everyone should go ahead and check to make sure that they have uh, all of the data from the filtering portion of the tutorial. This will have gotten you um, the full data set and then we'll have performed a bit of filtering on it uh, to, to make uh, some of these steps that are coming up here uh, run a lot faster by removing um, both some of the sequences that we don't need to be looking for um, and any of the data that is not associated with the FMT group. So if you have these same files that I do, uh, even if your numbers don't quite match, I think we're ready to get started. So to begin with, we want to go ahead and get our pre-trained classifier do this, we're going to use the data upload tool. We'll come over to the upload data button in the tools bar on the left hand side of the Galaxy interface. We will click on it. Then we're going to go, go down to paste slash fetch data at the bottom. We want to come up um, into the dialog and change the name and we're going to call our classifier GG-13-8-99 515 806-NB oh not that NB dash classifier dot QZA uh, you'll you can find the link in the tutorial. To get the address, I simply right clicked on the link and then uh, selected copy link addressed. Once we have the link address in our clipboard, we can come to this box here, select the box, right click on it, and paste the link to the pre-trained classifier on it. We don't need to adjust any additional settings and so now we should be ready to click start. Once we've started uploading we can go ahead and close um, this dialog by clicking close at the bottom right hand corner. Our name's already set, we have our classifier, we're ready to perform the actual taxonomic annotation. To do that, we will use the Feature Classifier Classify SKLearn tool. So we'll come to our toolbar on the left hand side of the Galaxy interface, come down to Feature Classifier, click on it to open all the tools, and then we want to uh, select um, Classify SKLearn. This will open the dialog in the middle of the Galaxy interface. We want to set the reads to our filtered dash sequences dash one QZA and then we want to set the uh, taxonomic classifier um, to the classifier that we just imported. These are the only things that we need to set and so we're ready to click execute. 
This step can take quite a while, so I'll meet you back here when it's done. All right, our taxonomic annotation has finished. Before we move on, let's be sure to rename this. All right, I'm just gonna call mine taxonomy.qza as suggested in the tutorial. And I'm going to click save. All right, before I move on, let's uh, make a visualization so that we can get a look at our taxonomic annotation. To do that, we'll use the metadata tabulate tool. So we'll come over to, to our toolbar on the left-hand side, come down to Chime 2 Metadata, click to open the toolbox, and then we'll click on Metadata Tabulate. We'll select Metadata from Artifact, and then we want to set it to our taxonomy.qza artifact. We don't need to set any other options, so we'll come down and click Execute. I'll meet you back here when this one is done. All right, it looks like Galaxy has finished producing our visualization. Let's rename it. Click Save. And then we can come take a look at it. Click on the label and come down and click on Chime 2 View. In this visualization, we can see the feature IDs, the taxon that was assigned to that feature ID, and the confidence um, of the assignment of the taxon to the feature. We can sort any of these columns by clicking in the label box. In addition to be able to sort, we can also search um, any of these fields. So if we wanted to find all of the feature or all of the taxon that were assigned to this particular feature ID, we can copy it and place it in the search bar. We can see that in this case there was only one taxon assigned to that feature ID and that it has a confidence of 0 0.9798. We'll clear our search bar. If we wanted to find all of the um, feature IDs that were assigned with a genus of Clostridium. We can copy that and paste, paste it into the search bar. However, when searching by confidence, we need to be careful because rather than uh, providing a range, it actually will search for exactly the number that we input. So we might imagine that we would want to search with a confidence of 0 0.95 or higher. However, were we to enter 0 0.95, it would only give us those confidence intervals that have a value of exactly 0 0.95, um, you know, followed by any any number of numbers. However, it, it will not include any values that are higher than 0 0.95 as the first two decimal places. For this step, we're going to be filtering our data based on the taxonomy that we just generated. By filtering using our taxonomy, we can remove non-targeted sequences as well as those with less informational content than we might desire. There are several criteria that we'll be using to filter based on our taxonomy. The first one is a common step in 16S analyses. That is, we'll be removing sequences that cannot be assigned to at least the phylum level. We'll be doing this in a both a positive and negative manner. That is to say, we'll be excluding any sequences that do not have a phylum level assignment, we'll, and then we'll also be requiring a phylum level assignment to be included in the data set. Finally, we'll be uh, filtering out any sequences that have an annotation that contains either chloroplast or mitochondria in its designation. We're filtering on these because these are eukaryotic organelle 16S sequences that may be included in our sample data, but that we are not interested in in our study. To perform the filtering based on our taxonomy, we're going to use the Taxa plugin filter table tool. To access it, we'll come to our toolbar on the left-hand side and scroll down to the bottom to Chime 2 Taxa. We'll click on it to open this toolbox and then we'll come down to the bottom where we see the Chime 2 Taxa Filter Table Tool. 
we'll click on it to open the dialog in the center of the Galaxy interface. We will begin by selecting our data and our taxonomy artifact. Data that we'll be using is the filtered-table-to artifact that was generated near the end of our filtering tutorial section. I'll just make sure that that's correctly selected and then we'll go on to selecting our taxonomy. In this case, this is the only um, artifact of the type feature data taxonomy that I have available in my environment here, so Galaxy has already automatically selected it. Remember, your numbering and naming may be slightly different, but these are the particular artifacts that we would like to include at this step. Now that we have our data and taxonomy selected, we can select our filtering uh, parameters. To do this, we'll come to the section where it says click here for additional options and click to open an additional dialog. For our first criteria, we want to make sure that there has been a phylum level designation assigned. So we'll click in the include section to change the drop down from none to provide a value. In the Green Genes Taxonomy Nomenclature, the phylum level taxa designation is indicated by P underscore underscore. Next, we'll move on to the characteristics which we'd like to exclude. We'll come to the Exclude section and change the dropdown from None to Provide a Value. First off, we'll want to exclude any phylum level uh, taxa that have not been assigned a name. This is indicated in the Green Genes Taxonomy and Nomenclature by P underscore underscore, that is the phylum level taxa designation, followed by a semicolon, which indicates that there is no other data provided to that taxa level. While there are no features in our data set that do not have a phylum level name, we can see this in regards to several other taxa levels. Here, I have opened the visualization that we produced earlier. In the search bar, I have entered underscore underscore semicolon to show us all of the features that include blank taxa level designations. In this first uh, feature, we can see that it has been assigned a kingdom level of bacteria, a phy phylum level of cyanobacteria, a class designation of chloroplast, an order a streptophyta. However, when we arrive at the family taxa level designation, we can see that it is simply terminated with a semicolon, meaning that no named family has been assigned to this feature. If we had a feature that had no assigned phylum level, it would be excluded by entering p underscore underscore semicolon into the exclude parameter. Let's go back over to Galaxy. In addition to excluding sequences with an annotation of no named phylum, we would also like to exclude those that are annotated with either a chloroplast or mitochondria designation anywhere in the annotation. To do this, we'll use the query delimiter to add these to our exclusion parameters. So after our blank phylum level designation, I'll add a comma and add chloroplast, add another comma and add mitochondria. So the reason that we want to remove the chloroplasts and mitochondria is that the chloroplasts are in the phylum cyanobacteria and the mitochondria are in the phylum alpha proteobacteria. If we do not remove those, it shows that we have a large number of, um, of sequences that are found from these phyla. However, these sequences would not represent um, a true microbial pop population in these phyla, but rather plant or host cell contamination. All right. We also are going to make sure that our mode still has contains instead of exact selected. Then we can click on execute. This may take a while, so I'll meet you back here when it's done. Now that our taxonomy-based filtering is complete, let's go ahead and rename our table. In this case, we're going to call it filtered-table-3.
After renaming it appropriately, we'll go ahead and click Save. Now that we've finished filtering based on our taxonomy, let's move on to an additional filtering step. We are going to be removing samples with low ASV sequence counts. Samples with low sequence counts often are samples that do not amplify or sequence well. When we move on to visualizing our data, these can often produce misleading results. This is because the observed composition of these samples often differs from the actual sample composition. In this step, we are going to be filtering to a threshold of 10,000 sequences in a sample. Later on in the tutorial, we will discuss how we arrived at this number in more detail. Let's head over to the toolbar, come down to Feature Table, click on it to open the Feature Table toolbox, scroll down to where we can see Feature Samples, click on Feature Samples to open the dialog in the center of the Galaxy interface. We want to select our filtered Table 3 artifact. Then we'll click on Click Here for additional options. And then in the text box for minimum frequency, we want to enter 10,000. Then we can scroll down to where we can see the Execute button and click. As before, I'll pause the video and meet you back here when it's done running. All right, let's go ahead and rename the results. We're going to be calling this one Filtered Table 4. And click Save. Now that we've performed the additional steps of removing ASVs not assigned to phylum and filtering samples with low ASV sequence counts, we may have some ASV sequences that are no longer present in our dataset that are still in our RepSeqs file. Let's go ahead and remove these ASV sequences to help make things run faster when we perform further analyses. To remove the excess ASVs, we will use the Feature Table Filter Seeks tool. We'll come over to the toolbar on the left hand side, come down to Feature Table, open the toolbox, and click on Feature Table Filter Seeks to open up the dialog in the middle of the Galaxy interface. The data that we want to use is our Rep Seeks. Then we'll want to expand the Additional Options section, and we'll provide the table that we just generated, that is Filter-Table-4. With that selected, we have everything we need, and we'll come down and click Execute. We'll pause the video and meet you back here when it's done. Now that Chime 2 has finished filtering out our excess ASVs, let's go ahead and rename this file. I'll click on the pencil, and we'll come over to the Name field. We're going to call this one Filtered Sequences-2.QZA. Now that I've renamed it, we'll go ahead and click Save. Now that we've removed the excess ASVs from our RepSeqs artifact, let's also produce a summary visualization of our new data with, that has been filtered on the taxonomy and had the low counts removed. Going to let this be an exercise for a minute, so we'll pause the video and give you time to perform this action on your own. Then. We'll meet back here and walk through it together. To produce the summary visualization, let's use the Feature Table Summarize tool. We'll come over to our toolbar, come down to Chime 2 Feature Table, click to open the toolbox, and scroll down to where we can see Feature Table Summarize. We'll click on it to open the dialog. We'll use the drop down to make sure our fil filtered table 4 artifact is selected. We also want to use our metadata. So we'll open the section for additional options. Then we'll click insert sample metadata. We'll leave metadata from TSV selected. 
and then we'll select sample metadata.tsv. All of our options have now been set and we'll click execute. We'll pause the video while this finishes running. Now that Chime 2 is finished producing our summary visualization, let's rename it. Click the pencil to edit and come to the name bar. We'll call this visualization filtered table for some exercise dot qzv then we'll click save all right here i've opened up all of the table visualizations that we've produced thus far on the left i have our original table visualization with all of the data included before any filtering steps have taken place we can see we have over 12,000 samples almost 18,000 features, and over 550 million total feature frequency. Next, in our filtering section of the tutorial, we reduced it down to 406 samples with 2,458 features and a total feature frequency of 22,972,681. 22, this was produced by filtering out any samples that were not in the auto FMT group, as well as reducing any or eliminating any features that were not found in at least two samples. On the right is the most recent visualization that we produced as a result of all of our other filtering. We see that we've removed another 50 uh, samples and approximately 50 more features. Um, by the filtering steps that we just performed. All right, let's head back to Galaxy and continue on. To finish up this section, let's generate a bar plot visualization so that we can see the results of our taxonomic annotation. To do this, we're going to use the Taxa bar plot tool. So we'll come over to the uh, toolbar on the left side, come down to Taxa, click to open taxa and then we'll select a bar plot then we'll want to make sure as our table that we have filtered table 4.qza selected and then we want to make sure that we have our ta taxonomy selected for the taxonomy section let's also include our metadata to do that we'll click on the additional options section in the metadata selection, we'll make sure that we have metadata from TSV selected, and then we'll select our sample metadata. All right, that's all the setup. Let's let it run. I'll meet you back here when it's done. Okay, our bar plot has been generated. Let's rename it and take a look. I'm gonna call mine taxa bar plots dash one QZV. Be sure to click save and then let's click on the label and open it in Chime 2 view. Let's take a look at the visualization itself. At the top we can download our bar plot in a variety of formats. We also have a slider that allows us to control the width of the individual bars. At the bottom of the page, there's a slider that allows us to move along the bar plot to see additional bars. We have a taxonomic level selector. In this case, we're looking at the kingdom level. And because the vast majority of our samples are bacteria, that's essentially all that we can see. Let's go ahead and set that um, to the uh, class level. We can see that there's some different color palettes we could choose from. I'm going to set it back to the default. And then finally we have some controls for sorting. This can be done either by the uh, by the annotation itself or by some of the metadata categories that we provided when we included the metadata um, in our visualization. Let's go ahead and select the auto FMT group. 
we can select whether it's sorted by ascending or descending. And we can also choose to relabel the x-axis. That is, to change the, or the label to the metadata category rather than the sample name itself. We can scroll along and see some differences between the groups. This can be helpful for discovering interesting questions in our data. So we can see in the treatment group, there are um, a lot more of these pink taxa than there are in our control group. So that might be a question that we would like to explore further later in our study. We can also include additional sort variables. So we could add one where we um, sorted by a particular annotation or by an additional metadata category. So we could also select disease along with our um, along with our auto FMT group. Take some time to play around with this visualization to see if you can come up with some questions of your own. In this section of the tutorial, we have explored generating a taxonomic annotation for the data and have performed some additional filtering steps. And finally, we produced this bar plot visualization that has allowed us to explore our data using our new annotation. That wraps it up for this taxonomic annotation section.